So during this part of the painting too, I usually take quite a few steps back and I really look at the painting and observe it, stand far back and look at it. And sometimes different things will stand out to me that way too. And then that's another way that I see what needs to be worked on and what needs to be left alone. So I, and I remember this, I remember realizing that my juice cup had no reflections on the orange part. <laughs> Okay, a little bit more form on the on the teapot spout. Oh, the stems of my cherries, which I'm going to do with the palette knife because I can just gather up some of that color on an edge and then use the edge of that palette knife to just, yep, just kiss in those little, yep, so satisfying. Not super specific on what kind of red I'm getting because any red is going to stand out against that white. But I think I wanted some dark red at the base there. Cool. I'm going to do it to the top three. So I'm observing the direction of of the stems in my setup and deciding that I don't really like them. So I'm just trying to make it up, trying to make up a more interesting pattern in what direction those stems are facing. You can use some of the background color to kind of fix the parts that I don't like. Yeah, I think adding little details like the stems, but just suggesting them like I'm not, I'm not like looking for their light, and, you know, their light side, and their dark side, like they're so thin. And I just want to leave them pretty pretty impressionistic like that, just, just suggesting them. And I think that that just adds a lot of charm to the painting and yeah, just helps it not feel overdone or overworked. Just reworking that, those, um, the prongs of the fork. Looks like I wasn't, I wasn't happy with how those were looking, so. I'm going to cut back in.
up just little edges, little um, parts of the painting that I feel like need more definition, like the top part, the top edge of that plate that the cup is sitting on. I felt like it needed more. Same there. more attention to those highlights on my yellow teapot. I think another way to know when a painting is done is just, you know, like everything that you do to the painting, like these marks that you're doing, like are they really elevating the painting anymore? Or are you just noodling things out and, it, and you know, just kind of spinning your wheels? Um, I think at around this point, I probably would have stepped away from my paint if I wasn't, you know, on like a, I'm being filmed and, um, you know, need to produce this awesome class for you guys, you know? Um, but if it was just me in my own time, I'd probably step away from the painting for a bit and let it sit for a little while and then kind of come back to it later. And, uh, and, uh, then just, and then kind of, you, you kind of approach it with like where you're more refreshed. So anyway, but now I'm going back into the bottom plates, um, realizing that those are a little bit unfinished and there's some reflected light and reflected, you know, shapes that I could work with there. So so plates are so interesting because the, the lip of the plate it has a form to it. Like it's, it's not just like flat, like a paper, right? So the light side of the plate and the shadow underneath it, like it doesn't, they don't just meet up and then that's the edge, you know, like there's this transition edge because the edges of the plate, it does have a round form to them because they're thicker, like they're not flat like paper. So the, that was um, the mark that I just made there or a few strokes ago around that edge where it's like, there's a transition tone in between the light side of the plate and the, and the shadow underneath. And it's usually in between mid tone, you know, more of a local, local color, local tone, or not local tone, sorry, local color of that plate. Okay, so this part of the plate, um, you can barely see it in the photo, but there are these little 
It's like a decorative element of the plate where there's these little stripes, little divots around the edge of the plate. And um, because that plate is so big and it's taking up a lot of real estate in my painting, um, I thought it was important to add some suggestions of those decorative marks just to add some texture and some charm to the painting. So, and again, it's kind of this dance in between getting too detailed and, and defining every single one and leaving nothing for the mind to fill in. Um, or like, you know, like allowing, not allowing any room for the mind to fill in information. So I'm just trying to suggest those little marks um, in a few areas uh, that I guess I see them, I see them the most, you know, and then kind of leave them kind of like lost and found form of those little decorative marks. And then going back up to my bowl, so my bowl has the same, because they came, they come from the same dinnerware set. So my bowl also, also has those um, decorative marks. So I'm going in and putting those in, just suggesting a few important ones. And there's different schools of thought on this, but Generally, you know, like that's what makes painting interesting to look at is or one of the things that can make a painting interesting to look at is how much information is there and how much our mind can fill in the gaps. Typically, that's kind of the school of thought is that when you have uh, when you have more to fill in, like more gaps to fill in in the painting, uh, that's when it's interesting to look at. But when everything's spelled out for you, when everything's defined, all edges are hard, like there's no room for your mind to interpret what you're seeing, then that can be a little bit from this school of thought, like it can be boring to look at. So just something to think about. Um, how can you suggest things? Um, still draw. Obviously, we we're painting representationally here. We're not doing abstract work or like purely abstract work. I guess you could argue all painting is abstract, but you know what I mean? <laughs> we're trying to make things look like the things that we're looking at. <laughs> but um, so yeah, just try and leave some areas maybe a little bit undefined and see how that feels.
Okay, I think I'm all done. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for painting along with me if that's what you're doing. Uh, please reach out to me with any questions. I want to be a resource for you. Um, leave me a review. Uh, let me know what you'd like to learn next. I am just so open to anything and everything you have to say. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, we'll see you in another class.